Good morning. Thinking about reading Proverbs 11. Proverbs 11 begins as so. The Lord abhors dishonest scales. This means fair practice and business and everything else. Uh, but accurate weights are his delight. The Lord loves it when we're honest with ourselves as well as everybody else. When pride comes, then comes disgrace. Hurt since I was a kid, pride comes before fall. Uh, but with humility comes wisdom. God seems to love a humble man. And I guess everybody can understand why. The integrity of the upright guides them. But the faithful are but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. You gotta have a uh, one way mind. You can't be cool part of the day when you're reading scriptures with the Lord and then run off and cuss and chase tail and act like a damn fool every time that you're around your friends. That's duplicity. We need to be straightforward and and honest about who we are, who we want to be. Wealth is worthless in the day of wrath. Oh, how true is that? But righteousness delivers from death. It's your righteousness that comes your afterlife. Without your righteousness, you don't have an afterlife. The righteousness of the blameless makes a straight way for them. But the wicked are brought down by their own wickedness. You've kind of become that wretch to where there's no doorway to God. If, you, if all you seek is carnal, earthly things, the righteousness of the upright delivers them. But the unfaithful are trapped by evil desires. It's our own desires that, that trap us. When a wicked man dies, his hopes perishes. All uh, he expected from his power comes to nothing. The righteous man is rescued from trouble, and it comes on the wicked instead. Uh, the Lord will. The Lord will take care of you. He'll watch after you. And those that are trying to hurt you will find those same troubles they tried to put on you. With his mouth, the godly, godliness, with his mouth, the godless destroys his neighbor. But through knowledge, the righteous escape. When the righteous prosper, the cities rejoice. When the wicked perishes, they are shouts of joy. 11.11 Through the blessings of the upright, a city is exalted. But by the mouth of the wicked, it is destroyed. This is a picture of our society. It's, uh, the, it was good people that built uh, cities and societies and made things good. It's the bad people, the people that look for something for nothing, the low class that destroy cities and make a cesspool out of it. And we start out our, our societies as good, strong, and well-balanced. And they, on this earth, they always end up upside down, and down comes everything. It's just the way of this world. There's no way around that. A man who lacks judgment derides his neighbor, but a man of understanding holds his tongue. There's that whole tongue thing again. Uh, that's our mouth, too much talking that runs us into the ground often. And when we feel the need to talk a lot, we feel the need to fill the world with our own understanding and knowledge, and it always comes to naught. Best to talk like a cowboy. It's few words, but say much with them. A gossip betrays a confidence. 
but a trustworthy man keeps a secret. For lack of guidance, a nation falls, but many advisors make victory sure. He's telling us here to stick together. Don't try to use your own sense of judgment, but uh, have good advisors. Have people that you can trust around you. This is basically what the idea of church was originally supposed to be. He who puts up security for another will surely suffer, but whosoever refuses to strike hands and pledge is safe. Now, this is, uh, I think this is talking more spiritual than, uh, than borrowing money, though the apply certainly rules with both, I'm sure. But to put up security for somebody is like uh, when you give somebody, speak up for a loan or sign for a loan, saying that you're going to be good for it. And usually what it says, instead of another, it says for a stranger, which means somebody who doesn't think like you, somebody who's not... Uh, in God's word, who, his word doesn't mean anything. But uh, this warning has seemed to come up through these proverbs uh, pretty often. Uh, take care of your own business. Help a brother. It's better to give a brother money than it is to borrow money. And uh, there's certainly uh, no wrong in that. A, kind, a kind-hearted woman gains respect. But a ruthless man gains only wealth. How true is that? A kind man benefits himself, but a cruel man brings trouble upon himself. Cruelty is a vein that this society feeds often. Uh, this society has always wanted to coddle the vein of cruelty. You can see it in videos today with people hunting. People really don't know how to hunt anymore. It's more about the practice of cruelty. And uh, it's uh, it, cruelty is a is a vein that we should nourish. Cruelty uh, it will run a cord through your entire life. It's not what it does to the animal as much as it, what it is what it does to you. Cruelty is a, a dangerous thing. If you're cruel to animals, uh, and later in your life you'll certainly, almost certainly, be cruel to people. Uh, the wicked man earns deceptive wages. But he who sows righteousness reaps a sure reward. Uh, well said and well, and very true. A truly righteous man attains life, but he who pursues evil uh, does to his death, goes to his death. The Lord detests men of, per of a perverse heart, but he delights in those who whose ways are blameless. Be sure of this, the wicked will not go unpunished, but those who are righteous will go free. Uh, this uh, to me is referring to Jesus because we're all wicked and we all have a long line of sins and through the blood of that cross and what Jesus uh, did for us all on that cross, we'll go free from those sins. But the wicked will not go unpunished. Uh, your conscience is enough to uh, pull you down in the mires of, of, un of uh, your unconsciousness. Uh, there's, uh, live good and, and sleep good, I say. Uh, like a gold ring in a pig's snout is a beautiful woman who shows no discretion. Uh, this, is, uh, this beautiful woman is probably as a whole as society. I feel it's talking about the desire of the righteous ends only in good, but the hope of the wicked only in wrath. One man gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. Um, if you have something, um, uh, Matthew Henry states in this portion here about holding up the price of goods, in a hard time, like say a hurricane or an emergency, uh, God doesn't appreciate when you hang on to those things for the price to drive up so you can make a killing. It's more uh, godly to uh, sell those goods at a fair, reasonable price to people who's in need and help those people keep them from starving than it is to, uh, to uh, rake them of their money. As uh, Pharaoh and uh, Joseph did uh, back in the day. 
A generous man will prosper. He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. And that's kind of like what I was just talking about. Uh, refresh others and someday you can be refreshed by Christ himself. People curse the man who hoards gain, but blessed blessing crowns him who is willing to sell. And that's like uh, fits in right what we were just now talking about. He who seeks good fi finds goodwill. He who seeks good finds goodwill, but he but evil comes to him who uh, searches for it. And ain't that the truth? That's probably one of the biggest truths in lives right there. You find what you look for in this life. And if all you're always talking about, oh, I'm in trouble or oh, I'm having hard times, man, that's what you're looking for, and whether you know it or not. So you have to change what you're looking for. Look for good things and you'll find good things. There's, there's no bigger truth than that. Whoever trusts in his riches will fail. Uh, earthly things, uh, money, you, that's a hard foundation to stand on, man, I tell you. But the righteous will thrive like a green leaf. You can be poor as a church mouse, and <coughs> you can thrive uh, if, you have, uh, if you have godly intent, if you have goodness in your heart. Uh, he who brings trouble on his family will inherit only the wind. It seems like there's an old movie called Inherit the Wind where they use this line to title a movie about the uh, creation versus uh, evolution in an old movie, which is a very good movie. Um, you don't inherit much if all you do is uh, be lazy and don't uh, do your work, don't bring your harvest in, don't put up uh, money on the side for your taxes. All you're going to inherit is the wind. And uh, he's giving you a warning. He brings, don't bring trouble on your family. Don't be a drunkard. Uh, work well. Do well. Be well. And your family will inherit a good, solid foundation of life. And the fool will be a servant to the wise. Uh, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And here's that tree of life again. Uh, a few uh, proverbs earlier it refers to that tree of life as wisdom. A fruit of the right, a fruit of the righteous is a tree of knowledge, and he who wins souls is wise. And there's that word wise again. Now, wisdom is that tree of life, and Jesus Christ is the, the most wisdom of all. He is that tree of life. If the righteous uh, receive their due on earth, how much more the ungodly? And the sinner. In other words, if you can be rewarded on earth by being a righteous man, how much more was that with an unrighteous man be received his reward, which is pain and misery, uh, sadness, and all those types of things? Right here on God's good green earth, uh, we can have our God now. We don't have to wait for our uh, heaven experience. We don't have to wait for uh, our godly uh, uh, expressions from God to come to us. We can have God's peace and love right here on earth. It starts every day when you get up. Uh, how are you going to be this day? How are you, are you going to talk vain things? Are you going to get on the bandwagon, run down your neighbor when another neighbor's gossiping? Uh, we all make these decisions right off the back. Are we going to be blessed or are we going to be tormented by our the fruits of our heart? Uh, if, we're, if we want good fruits, we better take up and grab on that tree of life instead of that tree of good and evil. Because good and e good and, uh, evil is means you're talking good one minute, next minute you're talking bad. and uh, that But that tree of life, you're always talking the things that Jesus wants us to talk about, which is those fair scales uh, the good Lord was bringing up in the beginning of this book. Well, that's it for Proverbs 11. I enjoy reading this book, and if you got some idle time where you're just, um, you can listen to a, a little bit of a video, it's always good to listen to uh, something in the Bible. Um, I watch a lot of other videos during the day about survival and fishing and stuff like that, and nothing 
fills my heart and touches me the way scriptures does, the time that you spend in scriptures. It's a good way to start the day. It's a good way to end the day. Um, I love you. I'm thinking about you all. And I hope that uh, you come back and see me sometime and we'll read a few more scriptures. Hang in there, everybody.